All right, we got a fun problem today, which is we have to convert this NFA into a DFA. So I get this question all the time from students. How do you actually convert an NFA to a DFA? So my guideline is at each point to find the epsilon closure of the sets of the set of states that you're in and then figure out where you can go from there. So let's get started on how to actually do this. So the start state is Q0 right here. Now we have to compute the epsilon closure of that set of states, Q0. Remember that epsilon closure just means every state that you can go to just by following epsilon transitions. So in this case, where can we go via only epsilon transitions from Q0? Well, that's Q1. So the epsilon closure says, well, I could either be in Q0 or I can be in Q1. One of those is the case. So when we make our DFA, the set of states that I could be in is Q0, Q1. So the DFA's states are keeping track of every single possible state we could be in at that point as we look at this NFA. So at the very beginning, we could either be in Q0 or be in Q1. So now we just got to figure out what transitions uh, from on input A and input B this DFA will go to. So let's look at input A. So what we need to do is let's figure out where Q0, which is one of the states we found in here, where can it go on A? Well, Q0 can't go anywhere on A, so we don't have to worry about that. Q1, where can it go on A? It can go to itself, and it can go to Q2. So at each point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the list of states that I could be in at that point. Well now, okay, so these are the states I could be in after reading an A, but now, we, again, we got to compute the epsilon closure. Well, does Q1 go anywhere on, on the, have an epsilon transition? I don't see any. Does Q2 have an epsilon transition? I don't see any either. So the epsilon closure doesn't get us anywhere else. So for that reason, the set of states I could be in now is Q1, Q2. Okay, so now let's look at input B. Well, Q0 can't go anywhere on B. Q1 can go to Q2 on B. And Q2, as we just computed before, the epsilon closure doesn't get us anywhere else. So the set of states I could be in at this point is just Q2. And that's it. Nice. So let's, let's look at the Q2 state. So where can we go on A? Well, we can go to itself or Q0. So the set of states I'm going to keep track of is Q0, Q2. But now we got to compute epsilon closure. Q2 doesn't go anywhere on epsilon. Q0 does. It, it includes Q1. So the set of states I could be in from Q2 reading an A is Q0, Q2, Q1. So on input A now, I'm going to have a set of states, Q0, Q1, Q2. And notice I'm making a state only when I haven't made that state before, which is the case here. Okay, where does Q2 go on B? Well, the only place it can go on B is Q3, and the epsilon closure of Q3 is itself because it doesn't have any epsilon transitions. So I'm going to have a Q3 state right here. Okay, so now let's look at Q3 going on A. Well, Q3 can't go anywhere on A, so that means the set of states that we could be in is empty, which means that we're going to make a dead state as a result. I'm going to call it the empty set because it's an empty set of states. And whenever you have this, you're always going to have self-loop on A and B because if you're not in any state and you try to read an A, you can't go to any state. So that's done. 
Q3 on B, well, that goes to Q1. Epsilon closure of Q1 is itself. So uh, we have this on input B goes to Q1. And then uh, we don't have that state yet. So let's look at input A from Q1. So on input Q1, uh, sorry, from state Q1 on input A, we can go to itself or Q2. But we already have that state already. So I'm going to go to here on input A. On input B from here, I can only go to Q2 and we already have that state. So notice that these two states are gonna do the same things because the only thing that Q0 can do is an epsilon transition. Okay, so we handled Q2, A and B, we handled everything in here, so that's good. Let's do this one. So Q1, Q2 on input A. Well, let's see. So that's, it's gonna have Q1 in it, it's going to have Q2 because it comes down here and because we have a self-loop down here. Q2 goes to Q0. And that's it. We don't go to Q3. So that means that we, have, we want to take the epsilon closure of 0, 1, and 2, which is itself because Q0 does go to ep Q1 on epsilon, but we already have that in our list. So the state that we need to go to is 0, 1, and 2 and we've already made it. So what I'm gonna do is try to zigzag my way through. And now let's look at B. So Q1, Q2. Q1 goes to Q2 on B, so I'm gonna make that on my list. Q2 goes to Q3 on B, so I'm gonna have that. And epsilon closure of these two is, is itself, the, the set itself. So we're going to make the state Q2, Q3 because I haven't made it yet. Q2, Q3. Let's see, Q2, Q3. Where can we go on B? Well, Q3 can go to Q1. Q2 can go to Q3. And I don't have that state yet, so I'm going to make that one. So Q1, Q3, where can we go on A? Well, Q3 doesn't go anywhere. So now we're just going to based on whatever Q1 can do, which is Q1, Q2. And that is right here. Q1, Q3 on B. Well, let's see. Q1 on B, so that'll take us to Q2. Q3 on B will take us to Q1. And... The epsilon closure of that is itself, so that means that we can close off this section, or at least this state. So let's look at Q2, Q3 on A. Well, Q3 doesn't go anywhere on A, so now we're just doing whatever Q2 would have done on input A, which is going to Q0, Q1, Q2, because we've already done that over here. My, this is getting a, to be a, <laughs> a big diagram. I'll make that A look a little nicer. Okay, so we handle, so this state's done, this state's done, this state's done, that one's done, uh, this one's done. I kind of erased that one, but that one's done. Uh, that one's done, so this is the only one that's left. So Q0, Q1, Q2, where do we go on A? Well, Q0 goes nowhere. So basically, we're just going to do whatever Q1, Q2 would have done on input A, which is go to itself. Because the epsilon closure will include that. Because Q2 can go to Q0 on, on A. And what about on B? So let's see. Q0 goes nowhere on B. Q1 goes to Q2. And Q2 goes to Q3. Again, it's the similar behavior as over here. So we're going to come down all the way to this other state. And now we've handled every single state 
So we don't actually need any more sets of states to include here because we've handled every single one of them. Now, the last thing to do after all that <laughs> is to make the final states. So which ones are final? So remember that the set, let's just look at this one. This says we can be in Q0 if we wanted to, or we can be in Q1 if we wanted to. So that means that if we want to accept, we want to make the right choices. The NFA makes the right choices at each step. So that tells us that the set of states that are final in this DFA are going to be the ones that include any of the final states over here. Well, in this case, there's only one final state Q0 here. So in the DFA over here, all of the states that include Q0 are the ones that are going to be final. So this one's not final because it doesn't have Q0 in it. This one, no Q0, no Q0. Ah, this one does have Q0 in it. So I'm going to make that final. No Q0, no Q0. That's not Q0 because it's, it's empty. This has no Q0. This one does have Q0 in it. So now we have successfully made a DFA. So always remember, at the start, you find the epsilon closure of the start state. And then once you find that whatever state that is, figure out where you can go on all of the inputs. Then you make those states and find the epsilon closures of those and repeat as long as you have some unfilled transition here. Once we filled out every single transition of every state in this machine, we were done and we didn't have to do any more. So what I would recommend is make, have a computer do this. <laughs> Don't do it by hand, but this is how you actually convert any NFA into a DFA.